The symptoms of circadian confusion include fatigue or waking up dog tired in the morning, not even wanting to wake up. Includes struggling to get going in the morning. Having multiple energy crashes depending on coffee or energy drinks or any kind of other stimulants to get somebody going. And finally, just <clears throat> ending the day on a low, feeling like you haven't accomplished as much as you were really capable of or as much as you wanted to. So that's what happens when our master clock inside our brain and all the, the 24 hour cycles in the billions of cells inside our body when they are out of sync with each other, we get circadian confusion. On the other hand, we have circadian sinking. Circadian sinking is when <clears throat> our master clock sinks our mass our 24 hours the 24 hour cycle inside our master clock and the 24 hour cycle inside each cell in our body are synced together. We get circadian sinking. And what does that look like? We when we get that, we can wake up. We can wake up alert, awake, energized. Also, we experience natural energy boosts throughout the day. And instead of energy crashes, which nobody really wants, and we can experience ending the day on a high, actually feeling that you've accomplished something and putting your head on the pillow at night, proud of what you've done this day. So how do we sync all these clocks? It's very simple. Chrono. Bedtime alignment. So you may have heard of early birds or night owls. Of course you have. We have the morning people and the people who are more alert and awake during the evening time. What most people don't realize is they think that that's a preference, whether you're an early bird or a night owl. What our sleep scientists have found is that there is a gene in our body's cells called a PER3 gene that determines whether somebody is an early bird or a night owl or an in-between type like a hummingbird. If somebody, let's say if your parents, if both of your parents were night owls, chances are you are a night owl as well. So how do all these birds come into play when it comes to clocks and waking up alert and energized versus Fatigued. Here's how. By every single person has a specific duration, has a specific bedtime duration and bedtime timing, a specific hour when they should go to bed and wake up in the morning. When they do it consistently, those things. Waking up alert, awake, energized, and ending the day on a high as a result of experiencing energy boosts throughout the day, those are natural things of chrono bedtime alignment. And let me show you what this looks like. So, it's pretty cool. <laughs> we have, let's say, not a row here. 
For some people, their natural wake-up time, if they're an early bird, would be 5 a.m. If they are a night owl, their natural wake-up time is more towards 9 a.m., a little bit later. If they're in the middle, a hummingbird, their natural time, wake-up time would be 7 a.m. And then we have other... You, you may be thinking, Vulcan, what's, what are these ranges in between? Over here, for example, we have what are called extreme early birds. I bet you haven't heard of extreme early birds. This is people whose natural wake-up time is 2 a.m. No joke. That's when their melatonin levels decrease and their cortisol levels, which uh, get them awake and alert and energized in the morning, that's when they naturally spike up for an extreme early bird. And we also have extreme night owls as well. People whose natural wake-up time could be as late as 11 a.m. So we have a big range here. Now the problem is a lot of people, they don't know what their timing is. They go to bed and they wake up in the morning at random times, which causes circadian